This is KGW News at Noon. It hurts. We lose our family. <laughs>Testing the microphone, one, two, three. He was 29-year-old Michael Pierce, according to his older sister, who we talked to here today. There hopefully won't be a plane flying right overhead when we do this. Thank you. Now at noon, Vancouver police shoot and kill a man accused of pointing a gun at people. Plus, so I am announcing today that I'm a candidate to become the next president of the United States. It is official, Washington Governor Jay Inslee announces his bid for president. The details on his campaign platform and what he's promising to do if he's elected. And a major expansion for TriMet, the new route they're rolling out to help riders get around in North Portland. KGW News starts right now. This is KGW News at noon. It hurts. We lose our family. The sister of a man shot by Vancouver police is grieving and wishing officers had found a different way to deal with her brother. Good afternoon to you. I'm Chris Willis. Thank you as always for being here. Two officers shot the man after getting reports he was pointing handguns at other people and at cars. Let's get started live with KGW's Tim Gordon, who spoke to the man's sister, Tim. She identified him to you. Yeah, Chris, she did. She says his name is Michael Pierce. He was 29 years old and homeless, but he had a five-year-old daughter. I'm gonna step out of the way and show you this memorial that's growing here at West 12th and Jefferson in Vancouver. It's the place where police confronted him. 
This is 29-year-old Michael Pierce. His older sister, Miranda, gave us permission to use pictures and identify him. Well, it's, it's heartbreaking because we love that kid. She's full of tears today, coming to terms with her brother's death. Pierce was shot by two Vancouver officers yesterday afternoon. The investigation went into the night. It started with police getting 911 calls of a man waving guns around and pointing them at people walking and driving by. When officers got here, they say the man pointed the guns at them. They opened fire. Uh, I heard pop, pop, and then pop, pop, pop. Friends in this part of Vancouver say Michael got help from a local homeless center called Share House. Janelle McDavid was the first to bring flowers this morning. She knew Michael. She described him talking psychobabble about feeling like a failure and wanting to end his life. I want to hate the police department, Vancouver Police Department. I really do. But I, I know right from wrong, you know, and it's hard to swallow, but they did what they needed to do. Janelle says the guns were not real firearms, and she wants police to be more compassionate. Michael Pierce's sister wants her brother back. He wasn't just some kid out here. He was our family. He just had, he had a lot of mental problems, and they could have talked him down. It was their choice not to. Now, the Clark County Sheriff's Office is leading the multi-agency investigation. They're asking any witnesses who've not reported what they saw to call the tip line. That number's on your screen right now. It's 360-397-2120. The two officers involved in this uh, critical incident are on leave right now. That's standard protocol. Uh, we're told they may be identified as soon as tomorrow. Chris, back to you. So sad. Tim Gordon live for us. Thank you, Tim. And we'll bring you any new information on this shooting as we have it. You can go to the news app or KGW.com for the very latest. Other news now. A 15-year-old is set to be arraigned on murder charges later this afternoon. Police say Jeremiah Hannon killed an 18-year-old at the Motel 6 in the Lloyd District last December. Hannon is already facing charges for another incident less than a week after that murder. We're told Hannon was part of a group of kids who attacked a man on a Max train. The victim says it happened after he asked the kids to turn down the music they were playing. Police are investigating a crash that killed a woman in southeast Portland this morning. The vehicle hit the woman near the intersection of 92nd and Holgate Boulevard. Information limited right now, and we don't know what led up to the crash. Police say the woman who died is in her 50s, but they haven't said much else. They do say the driver stayed at the scene after the crash. Drivers had to deal with some icy spots during the morning commute. Our photographer came across this vehicle rolled over on Highway 14 in Camas. Wow, conditions have improved a lot this afternoon. Blue skies right now as we take a live look from the Rose City Sky Cam. Let's get the latest now from meteorologist Chris McGinnis with a look at your forecast. Chris. It was a chilly February. Well, and it's going to be a chilly March, too, at least the first <laughs> part of it. You know that walk down to the square was chilly out there for sure, Chris, despite the blue sky. Here's some more blue to look at as we uh, report the cold facts here about February 2019. Third coldest on record at Portland, uh, 6.2 degrees below average, so solidly in third place there. 27 of 28 days for the month, so basically the entire month at or below average, including many days that were 10 to 12 degrees below normal. So really, really cold stuff. Today, of course, is March 1st, so we should warm up, right? The start of meteorological spring. Our normal high this time of the year, 54. Our forecast high, 46. So basically more of the same. The good news is, at least today, we are enjoying some sunshine out there. The cloud cover breaking up nicely, as you can see here on our Wells Fargo Sky Camera. Last check at PDX is 44. We've got a light east breeze out there this afternoon. That breeze is going to pick up a little bit through the weekend. So while we do have sunshine, a nice dry weekend forecast both Saturday and Sunday, it's going to be breezy. So high temperatures still running a good 8 to 10 degrees below average, and it's going to be a breezy one as well. So brisk but sunny for the weekend. We'll break that down in more detail, get you to the coast, get you up into the mountains, and have a look to the next seven days coming up in just a few minutes. Chris? A little bit of good and bad. All right, Chris, we'll see you then. Thank you. All right, you can see this coming. That's why our crews were there. All that snow that dumped on Lane County this week now taking a toll. Heavy snow caused a support beam to collapse at the gym at Thurston High School, just east of Eugene. You can see all that damage it caused. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. Turn the page now to Bend, where some business owners are also dealing with damage from the snow. This is aerial footage that shows the destruction over a bakery warehouse. 
Police say two people inside the building heard cracking and popping noises. They say the roof collapsed about 15 minutes later. Fire officials estimate the damage at more than $850,000, but the manager says they're now looking for a temporary facility so they can keep serving their customers. All right, politics now. It is official. Washington's Democratic governor, Jay Inslee, is running for president in 2020. Made that announcement this morning with this video, and he just wrapped up a news conference a little while ago. Here's Casey Aitchison from our sister station in Seattle. Well, we just wrapped listening to the big announcement from Washington Governor Jay Inslee. The worst kept secret, but he is officially running for president of the United States of America. And it's pretty appropriate where the announcement happened. We're inside a solar energy warehouse, and that is the entire focal point of his campaign. He talked a lot about fighting climate change, but he used that to touch on other issues, things like the economy, national security, even health and minority communities. When it comes to the economy, he says climate change is not more important than the economy, it is the economy. So, so much more to come. But again, this announcement just happening today, Governor Jay Inslee of Washington is running for president. In Seattle, Casey Aitchison, KGW News. All right, Casey, thank you. And as she just mentioned, Governor Inslee's campaign will focus on climate change. Here's what he had to say at that news conference. Now, I am calling on America to engage in a new national mission, a mission to defeat climate change. And let's commit to put every American in their ingenuity, in their innovation, in their creativity, and just their plain hard work into an all-out effort to solve this problem. Governor Inslee says if he's elected, he will not take a dime from fossil fuel companies. Instead, he says he'll focus on creating clean energy. Governor Inslee will head to Iowa next week for a series of stops all focused on climate change solutions. Governor Inslee joins a crowded field in the presidential race. So far, more than 20 Democrats have announced or hinted at a run in 2020. That includes Senators Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris. A spokesperson for Senator Jeff Merkley says he'll make a decision on whether he will run this month. A funeral for Dennis Richardson will be held on Wednesday. The Republican Secretary of State died at his home Tuesday night after battling cancer. The service will begin at 2 p.m. inside the state capitol building in Salem. Before that, Richardson will lie in state in the capitol rotunda starting at 9 a.m. Richardson was the first Republican in more than 30 years to hold the Secretary of State's office. Bigger picture now, President Trump is back from his trip to Vietnam where he met with North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un and as NBC's Susan McGinnis reports, President Trump is now facing fallout from Michael Cohen's testimony. President Trump landed in Washington hours after his former lawyer and fixer Michael Cohen finished three days of appearances before congressional committees. The president made an appearance on Fox. When you have an attorney, you're supposed to be able to rely on your attorney. Attorney client privilege? Well, it's, but it's also called reliance. And uh, he just was not much of an attorney, that I will tell you. I thought it was a terrible display of dishonesty, actually. In dramatic testimony this week, Cohen painted his former boss as a racist con man who directed him to lie about extramarital affairs and about his business dealings in Russia. Mr. Trump knew of and directed the Trump Moscow negotiations throughout the campaign and lied about it. On Capitol Hill, points of view on Cohen fell along party lines. Cohen's going to jail. Why? For lying. We are moving into territory that is very perilous for the president and cannot be ignored by the Congress. Congress sees Cohen's testimony as a roadmap for future witnesses. Alan Weisselberg, Ron Liebman, and Matthew Calamari. There's word the House Intelligence Committee plans to call Trump Organization CFO Alan Weisselberg. It doesn't seem that the president and his companions are out of the woods yet. Federal prosecutors in Manhattan are continuing their work. As are congressional investigators, with the long-awaited Mueller report expected any day. Cohen is now scheduled to make a reappearance on Capitol Hill next Wednesday. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, NBC News. Susan, thank you for that. There are three new confirmed cases of the measles up in Clark County. That brings the total number of cases up to 68. In response to the outbreak, the Clark County Health Department is now offering free vaccinations to adults and to children this afternoon. You don't need insurance to get the measles vaccine through the program. Just show up at the Legacy Medical Group Family Wellness Center in Vancouver. You got to be there between 1 and 7 tonight. 
Three additional vaccination clinics will be held the next three Fridays of this month. Good news now for bus riders in North Portland. TriMet is extending one of its routes across the Fremont Bridge. They're adding 13 stops to line 24. Going to start at Fremont and Northeast 18th Avenue. The route will continue to Legacy Emanuel Hospital, go across the Fremont Bridge, and then end in the Goose Hollow neighborhood. Oregon Representative Barbara Smith is one of the lawmakers who pushed for that expansion, and she spoke at an event this morning. As housing prices and at rise and many low income and even middle income Oregonians are pushed further and further east, connectivity between our neighborhoods and the city, se city center is critical. This is TriMet's first bus line to cross the Fremont Bridge since the bridge opened back in 1973.